Good morning, sports fans. Welcome to the Cheap Seats. I'm Scott Kirby, along with Joe Ryan, broadcasting live from the Christian Village here in Lincoln, Illinois. Uh, this morning, we got uh, Julie King in with us. She's the Director of Independent Living at the Christian Village. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Good, good. Uh, now, we're here. We come here about once a month, and I know mm -hmm. you've been on here before, and you're a, you're a sports uh enthusiast i should say i am mm. i am not a sports participator per se um anybody that looks at me knows that i don't play sports <laughs> um i am just not that coordinated but i love to watch athletes okay well we're going to talk you want to talk a little bit of uh some olympics coming up but first tell us a little bit about what's going on out here and what you're working on as far as new housing option for the folks in and around uh, logan county and what can you tell us about uh, the new housing uh, I'm project. Re I'm really excited about it. We, um, at the Christian Village, we've been serving residents of Logan County and their families for almost 50 years. It'll be 50 years in 2015. And uh, the reason we started was because there was a need that wasn't being met for the folks that live here in Logan County. And so they opened the nursing home for them. Then in uh, 2000, again to meet a need that wasn't being met, they opened the Alzheimer's wing so people with dementia had a safe place to live and um, continue living out a full life. Well, we looked for other areas in Logan County where there was a housing need that wasn't necessarily being met. So what we developed was a concept called Almost Home. Almost Home is for someone who doesn't need 24-hour nursing care, but they also don't need assisted living or supportive okay. living. They fit somewhere in between. And it's also for people who need just a short time stay. So instead of having to sign a long-term year's lease, it's a daily rate, um, like an extended care suite. Okay. Um, so we're excited about it. Yeah, that sounds like uh, something that, you know, like you said, you don't have to have the 24-hour care if it's somebody right. just maybe rehabbing or right. some right. you know some uh, issue there that right. you, know, you have the facilities to you know for their needs so they they have all the uh, accommodations that all the other residents have in this program. Yes, um, it'll be a fully furnished one-bedroom apartment. So it has a living room, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, bunch of closets fully furnished and fully equipped so the kitchen's going to have pots and pans dishes everything that you need microwave coffee maker whatever you need um, so let's say joe you have a like great that. a great aunt that well, you i was going to say joe because he's right around the corner <laughs> <laughs> well there is that but you know i didn't want to <laughs> insult him be careful <laughs> You have a great aunt that, that you check in on on a regular basis, maybe three, four days a week. It's real wealthy. That's okay. <laughs> if so, does she need a, a niece? <laughs> you She's and I got need enough to talk. problems with me. <laughs> <laughs> and you check on her on a regular basis. But you and your family are planning this vacation, and you have always wanted to go, say, to Disney World. But there isn't anybody to check in on your aunt. All you do is... I don't know, bring her a meal every so often, sit and talk with her a little bit, make sure that the cat got fed. Um, so she's still performing the she's daily She's still doing, of life. exactly, exactly. Maybe you're taking care of her laundry, yard work, some of those things that you don't want her going down the basement steps to do her laundry. Mm -hmm. So you're taking care of that, but you need to go. You, you, you have planned this vacation for your family. Well, instead of calling around looking for people who might be able to come in and <coughs> check on her, she could come to Almost Home, bring the cat. Cat's allowed to come too. Um, and there's a daily rate instead of that monthly rate. And she could stay as long as you're gone. She'd get three meals a day. Breakfast is cooked to order. Lunch is a big sit-down affair, buffet style. There's a salad bar, two or three entrees, two or three vegetables, um, dessert. Beverages are 24-7. You want a cup of coffee, you just go down, you help yourself to your coffee or whatever. And then there's the activities. Housekeeping is taken care of. Your laundry is taken care of. It's all done. Wow. Then you come back from your vacation. Good deal. Aunt Lucy is thrilled because, you know, she had a little vacation sure. while you were gone. And you didn't have to worry because you knew she was taken care of. 
And I saw Scott's eyes light up when you said, oh, <laughs> that's everything you need. There right you go. There. Is there an age limit? Uh, <laughs> maybe. It's a, uh, no, it sounds like a great deal. Yeah. Especially yeah. because yeah. that's, it's going on more than you know. Yeah. You know I mean? Well, and then for folks coming out of the nursing home, you mentioned that. Let's say they came here, um, <coughs> uh, someone maybe had knee replacement surgery or fractured a hip or something. They did their therapy. Um, they don't qualify for therapy any longer under the Medicare guidelines. And of course, we all have to play that game of what the government says they'll pay for. Right. But home is not ready yet. Kids are putting in a ramp or retrofitting the bathroom so that the, it's um, ADA accessible. Then you can come out of the nursing home and go into almost home, kind of get your sea legs when it comes to being a little more independent in a setting that's more like home until the home is ready and then go home or until you're ready for home. Maybe the, the home isn't the issue, but the person needing and wanting to go home isn't quite ready for that level of independence. Well, then they can come to almost home. So, so is almost home ready to go now? February 1st. And it'll be part of the building across the street? Mm -hmm. Is there a... Uh, who are they going to contact to find out more about that for you? They should call me. Um, and that they can call is? my direct line, which is 217 732 5013. King Julie. King Julie, yes. King Julie. It's an easy <laughs> it way to good. remember it. It is good to be king. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very. I know that there's a lot of use for it. How, did yeah. you say earlier that I missed out like how many rooms you had available for that, or do you make them up as you go? No, we have one. We have one that we set aside specifically for that, so it will always be ready to go. Um, I was as, hoping as Jake was going to be here because I need to see him about some furniture. <laughs> but well, uh, he's the man that knows. He'll call here in a second, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. sure he's. Yeah, not, he'll, yeah he's his van right is starting now. He's on the way. Yep. You're uh, so uh, along those same lines, though. You're the this place is full, right? Like all the time. Uh, not Are, all the time. Uh, it, it fluxes, you know, in and out. Uh, right now, I have um, three apartments in the congregate building that are available, and we're running a special for those. Uh, anybody that comes between now and the end of March, if they decide to move in, get uh, the housekeeping laundry and three meals a day, which they call the deluxe service package. They'll get that for free for two months. Now, you said there's only one room for the almost home? Yes. So... There might be a waiting list? There might be. Okay. Right. So, so if, if you're planning that vacation, uh, you know, that scenario mm -hmm. I gave you with your great Aunt Lucy, um, you might want to call ahead and say, I'd like to reserve the almost home for this amount of time. That sounds like an excellent idea. It does, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, the phones are probably going to start ringing off the hook I here. hope so. I hope so. Because that just gives the family members, puts them a little bit of ease and doesn't make them feel guilty if they right. want to go on a trip but can't right. because grandma or aunt sally or whoever mm -hmm. it is you know that they're taken care of you don't want to just leave them so this kind of gives them a little bit of right you know, puts them at ease and right. lets them enjoy the you know their vacation mm -hmm. so yeah it sounds like a great program some of the things that we uh, are looking at uh, of course there'll be cable and uh, phone included and mm -hmm. um, much like a hotel your long distance charges will you'll be billed for those later if you have long distance charges yeah, but everybody local has cell phones yeah now. anymore and wi-fi I mean, th I think it'll be important to get some Wi-Fi in that sure. building right. so that people can, um, uh, a lot of folks, a lot of your yeah, seniors are, that that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So uh, being able to uh, get your email and things like that are still important to, to seniors. So. All right. What's that number once again, if they want to call? And I mean, it's not available till February 1st. February 1st. Okay. What's that number? 217-732-5013. <coughs> Okay, so call King, King Julie, King Julie, the director of independent <laughs> living. If you're uh, interested in the uh, almost home program, and you know, it, I'm sure it's going to be a big success. Okay, moving on. You want to talk? Thank you, yeah, because yes. the community needs that. That's Absolutely, well, for the community, yeah. Yeah. it is. And you were wanting to talk when you sat down. You want you said you want to talk some Olympics, which yeah, is right around the corner. Senior Olympics. I'm excited about that. I'm a little. I'm like everyone else. I'm a little worried about. Uh, uh, the people who want to spoil the event by blowing things up. Right, and they've had some uh, issues with that in they Russia. They have. Yeah. They have. But uh, I have a strong feeling that Russia is going to find a way to control that. <laughs> they have a reputation of, yeah. of being able to... Um, They'll chop their hands off or something. I don't That's know. 
<laughs> That's what they do over there. They don't put them in jail. They chop something off. Oh, my Is gosh. That right? Yeah. I think they do, but the problem are the suicide bombers. You know? yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, who yeah. don't really care. They but, yeah, you know, I always enjoy the Summer Olympics, and then there's a lot of uh, different sports in the Winter Olympics there that are. people don't see. And you, we were talking before we went online. You have two favorite Olympics. I sports. do. I do. And I was making jokes about them. I, to be clear, I really do enjoy watching curling. Yeah. But uh, as I was saying before oh, we went better. on, okay, yeah, that's here's a, a sport. That's a, you don't have to be in shape to yes, do that. <laughs> here's a sport where you show up team, in Joe. street clothes and you put on bowling shoes and you throw a rock with a handle on it and then your teammates scoot up ahead of you with a Swiffer. Yeah. <laughs> and the team is going, oh, 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 hey, 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 hey. And, you know, and everybody's got their own, their own uh, way of, of scooting that little rock yeah. along the, the channel that they make with that broom. And you know how it got started, and that's what's so funny. Um, you know, it was uh, some really bored <coughs> Canadians or someone who <laughs> was really cold, and they were bored and had they a little too much vessel. mead, and they got out there and started throwing rocks and brooms. They used well, brooms. Yeah, and then the, the Winter Olympics four years ago really, really picked up because there was a lot of coverage on it, really. There was. On the curling. Uh, it seems like every time you turn the station on or they have a lot of outlet stations too right. which carry right. you know there's curling and yeah. you sit you sit there and find yourself just watching for yeah, it's hours it's and it's like, i can do that <laughs> yeah well i'd, I'd want to be the thrower because you just they slide they right. release you're done and yeah they make it look easy but that's yeah, the wonderful thing that's how you get in my opinion that's how you get young kids interested in sports is you show them hey that doesn't look too hard let me try that right um, so it, it dips their feet into a sport of some kind. At least they're doing something. Yeah. Um, and then maybe that will get them interested in doing other sports as well. Which brings us back to shuffleboard. And I believe I was the champion at uh, down at the uh, Collinsville tournament. Shuffleboard? Where you? Where did you play yeah. shuffleboard at? Uh, someplace on the last day when we had that six-hour layover. Oh. Yeah, we have shuffleboard. Lynn Put and I took everybody on, and uh, <laughs> we were the champs. Udi. I like I like the fact that you play shuffleboard because we have a court over at the village. So so when you're you enrolled, when, yep, you can um, go play shuffleboard. It's kind of like curling. It is yeah. kind of like curling, a little bit. Without the Swiffer. <laughs> Without the Swiffer, that's exactly right. Okay. Well, and then the the biathlon. Biathlon was yeah, your other favorite. That's a, that's another one where you wonder who thought that up. You put on skis and you cross country ski and you try to ski faster than the other guy and then you stop and you pull a rifle off your back and you shoot at a target and then you <laughs> <laughs> then you throw the rifle back on your back and you ski some more I was like, don't get that confused no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'd be too tired i'd fall over shoot the guy ahead of you yeah. or yeah. you know put your rifle butt down and try to scoot along For, or you, forget yeah. to put it on safety Something. When you're skiing, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we talked about field dressing the the line judges. Yeah. If you accidentally shot one, you get extra points if you can field dress the judge. Well, in 34 <laughs> days and 57 minutes, we'll be able to watch some of that. So yeah. tune yeah. in to the Olympics on NBC uh, right around the corner. Well, Julie, thanks for coming in well, and uh, sharing all the information. Once again, it's the uh, Almost Home program. Uh, here at the Christian Village, mm -hmm. and for the you know, let's give them the phone number one more time just so they know, and then okay. you know, your phone's going to start ringing off the hook. 217 732 5013. Ask for yeah. Julie, ask for Julie, she'll King take Julie. care of it. And it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a hot commodity, and they're pr they're more than likely will be a waiting list. So if that's mm -hmm. something that you guys, uh, listeners, uh, one to set right. up, give Julie a call. And, uh, One more option for folks. Yeah, One absolutely. more option. All right, we're going to take a commercial break. Uh, we got Neil Alexander, coach of the Lincoln Railer basketball squad in. Uh, it's been a while since we've talked to him. A lot has gone on since he's been on air last, a lot of basketball games. So stay tuned. You're in the cheap seats, 96.3 WLCNonline.com. Good morning, sports fans. You're in the cheap seats, 96.3 WLCNonline.com, streaming live on the web 24-7. Scott Kirby, Joe Ryan at the Lincoln the Christian Village here in Lincoln, Illinois, and we got Coach Neil Alexander in with us this morning. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. 
it's been a while since you've been on the cheap seats with us and uh, uh, a lot of basketball has been played the past I guess week uh, over at the Collinsville tournament a very successful tournament uh, give us your uh, your outlook on since you've had a, a week to kind of look back uh, give us your uh, take on what the what the tournament looked like for you well I thought our kids played exceptionally well um, it looked like we we started to play and and you know from our last outing you know we, we, we played what December 6th December 20th and that's not time to get into a rhythm of any kind so our kids uh, you know they got to play some basketball four games in three days and uh, you can see what happens when they play and get on get to you know get some momentum going and um, I thought we'd done a, a lot of great things down there and uh, you know hopefully the kids will grow from that and continue to get better. Well you started the tournament out with uh, against a, a Granite City, City team that uh, wasn't a very good uh, a team just all around. I know they're pretty young and inexperienced but just dominated them and then followed that up with a a McClure North team that was supposed to give you a uh, a game and probably one of the best uh, one of the better teams in the tournament and beat them by 30 as well. Well, the kids played really well. They were w they were ready for that game and uh, you know as as well as you know even one thing that this group has done is they've always played to their level of competition and I don't think they did that. I think they played to to their potential throughout the tournament and that's what we want the kids to do is to play the best that they can play not who you're playing against uh, you know perform at your level the highest level that you want to get to and this group has a lot of uh, goals that are that are really high for them and I think they're all reachable but you have to have luck along the way and uh, you know you have to uh, be consistent on how you play and your preparation must be uh, you know very focused on the things that you're doing and and uh, at a tournament where you're playing four games in three days there's not a lot of time to be uh, spend time on preparation and one of our things on our program is worry about what we do in our program and execute our things and good things happen and I think our kids uh, done that pretty well well then you you uh, you win the first two games uh, pretty easily uh, running clock on both of them which I think the game lasted probably not even an hour uh, and then you come in Saturday at 1 o'clock and you take on a Belleville East team. Pretty athletic, uh, a, b a bigger team than we saw the first couple of games and took care of them as well. Yeah, Belleville East, you know, they were, they were really, uh, they were bigger than what I thought, you know. And setting up in the top row of the, the gym down there looking down, uh, uh, you don't really know how big the kids are until you get down there on the floor to see, see the size of them and, uh, you know, uh, our kids, uh, they, they played well. They executed. And um, one of the things that we did do is uh, we shot the ball exceptionally well. And when we shoot it, shoot the ball well, we look pretty good. And uh, we broke the tournament record down there. We hit 44. I think we were 44 out of 89 uh, on three-pointers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's an excellent percentage. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, uh, our team was fun to watch. Uh, they were four they days. Were what was the game that just dominated? Was it the third game that was just everything clicked? Wow, they lo looked unbeatable. It was really. the second game. The, yeah. second. Yeah. the McClure. McClure North, if you get a chance to watch it, it's uh, a performance that might be one of the better ones that, was. that we've had here in a long time. And we had great ball movement, and that was a good basketball team, and our kids just picked <laughs> them apart. They did. Well, we make it to the championship game against a, a a team and a coach that you're pretty familiar with, uh, Belleville Altoff, uh, a disciplined team. Uh, we came out right from the get-go and put it to them, and uh, we were up by, I think, 20 at one point. And then it seemed like we kind of just we were trying to eat some clock and kind of got a little lackadaisical and didn't want to go to the basket. Belleville uh, Altoff went on a little bit of run and made a game of it at the end. Well, <clears throat> That's another game, you know, if we had anything or any negative thing, it was the fourth quarter of the championship game. Uh, I thought our guys looked like they were tired and they weren't aggressive to the basket. Um, there's some decisions that, you know, there, there's fine lines in any sport that you play on when you start taking time off the clock, when you start doing different things. And, you know, we, we shot and uh, our way to a 20-point lead by using the three-pointer, and then we continued to use the three-pointer towards the end. And uh, your gear's got to switch a little bit. We were in the bonus. Um, you know, 
in the whole fourth quarter and you know we didn't attack the basket to get to the three throw line we would try to run a little clock and then kick it and shoot a three and uh, you know you miss a couple and they get a couple run outs and they hit a couple threes and they get the momentum and the whole game switched there and uh, it was a big four point play the whole game switched yeah you know, hit a bomb from yeah. the seats yeah and you know just little things one play can make a change in a game and switch the momentum and you have to really be careful to not let that happen and I think that's one of the things that out of the tournament that we learned there is you know you have to be conscious of when you're changing gears when you're going to try to get to the free throw line and and our guys done a great job of getting to the paint kicking to our guys and uh, you know I could say you know Max Cook was named the MVP but I think our whole team was the MVP and not taking anything away from Max and one thing about Max is he didn't score a lot uh, but he ran our basketball team, and that's what a point guard is supposed to do. Well, you're absolutely right about the any one of the kids could have been MVP, and and hard leave Joey Olden off of that team. Yeah, you know, that kid's yeah. everywhere doing everything, and he's not on the all or the all yeah, I, I I thought he he didn't make it, and I thought he deserved to make sure. it. I thought we had four or five guys, and and to me, and and I think our guys are in the same boat. I wish they had just put one player on there and just named the Lincoln team because I we're not the the uh, a team unless our five guys are playing together and we've said it all along five guys playing together are better than one or two individuals well offensively ed bowlby really stepped up and you know he's really started the games off you know hitting that three-pointer he was named to the all conference or the all tournament team and he had a great term as well the, the kid he's got just a smooth shot i don't know it's it kind of well, looks like, like yours, yeah, it's Joe. like mine. Yeah, right? you know. <laughs> well, he hit five in one quarter, and you still haven't hit five in your career. So, you know, we're okay. Well, they didn't that. have a three-pointer <laughs> back when I played. But we had Ed Bowlby make the all-tournament team, Gavin Block, Max Cook, and a Max Cook with the MVP of the tournament. So getting three kids off your team, to an all-tournament team, especially with the talent down there. Belleville Altoff had a freshman. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. I'm sure you know it. But we're going to see him the next three years. Good and he's, one. he's a ton. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's a very special player. Uh, he, he is a high major player right now, and uh, as a freshman, and I mean, develop really strong, big, mm -hmm. six-three kid. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to believe a freshman can play at that level. Well, then uh, East St. Louis had this six-ten <laughs> kid. <laughs> he's a freshman, he's and a freshman. Well, I don't know. Where, I don't know if we can get some of these kids moving up this way, but. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Is he really a freshman or is he really 21 years old? Because he's just, he's huge. He's a big dude. I mean, he still had that little baby face, still a little bit clumsy. But for a freshman, I thought his footwork was pretty good. He does well posting He moves up. well. He runs the floor well. And uh, he's another high major that's uh, been offered already. And, you know, that, that tournament's got a lot of, and Belleville Altoff, you know, they had the Goodwin kid, the freshman. Mm -hmm. Uh, the freshman, there was number 35. I don't know. I can't remember his name. I remember his number. Uh, but he come in and another freshman and hit two threes Is right there young? at the end of the game. Uh, and then they had, uh, no, he's a sophomore. Oh, and then, right. uh, they had two <laughs> other sophomores. They started yeah. two sophomores and a freshman and brought a freshman off the bench. And they're, they're a team to be uh, you know reckoned with here down at Collinsville for the next three years. Well, I'm not a basketball coach, really not a very good football coach, but I know that from watching Lincoln play in these games, the one thing you have is that another team can't say, "Hey, you know what? We're gonna we'll just we'll leave that kid alone. We'll leave those two right. kids alone. They can't hurt us. You know, we'll make sure these kids don't beat us." And I don't think you can do that with the Lincoln team. Yeah, yeah, five athletes out there that can all do something. Well, you know, we've said this group here is really a hard team to guard. Uh, you know, I I don't know how you guard us, and 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 that what that that's real handy <laughs> when you when you got that kind of right. team is who do you guard and you know you you gonna sag off and you know right now you know Tyler Horsham is you know struggling with his shot a little bit but he he's really shot it well this week in practice and you know when he gets on there, there's five and you got uh, uh, Peyton Ebler coming sure. off the bench that that's very dangerous but Will Cook our our bench even comes in sure. and who who are you gonna guard right you know so and that's you say Peyton Ebler I think when you put he comes in for Horsham, your defense really gets a lot quicker, and he does a great job out on that wing. He just flows to the ball, has a knack to where to be. Well, we change, you know, we change, but we, we need people to, you know, we, we have to play hard, and, you know, we've got some games coming up here, and uh, hopefully we get one tonight. Uh, yeah. Uh, get that one in, and then we prepare. You know, we don't have a Saturday night off the rest of the year. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Got some makeup yeah. games we coming up. We got makeup out. games stuck in there, and uh, you know we've even got a Tuesday night game that has to. And you know if let's say this one gets canceled and you start throwing it in there, uh, we're going to be playing the NBA schedule where we play three or four nights a week. <laughs> well, you got the you got the Schnucks, or is it the Schnucks still? The county market. County market, okay. market in Jacksonville coming up. That you got games through the week, and then your makeup games. A lot of basketball to be played in the next uh, couple months here. Well, when we put the schedule together, one of the things that that I do is I'd rather practice in December. You know, play one game a week, mm -hmm. so you keep the kids fresh, and then you start with the you know your Collinsville tournament, and then start playing every day. And because once you get practice so long you get everything in you you, you get to play in and uh, you know just like the uh, county market tournament um, you know you learn a lot more playing other people than you do practicing against right. yourself and when you start playing uh, a lot of basketball games uh, you really start to you know the kids get focused uh, you know cause they'd rather play than practice so, oh yeah absolutely uh, i think there's not a kid out there that would tell you hey i'd rather practice and play a game <laughs> no I, so, I know my kid he hates practice yeah but, uh, well the practice makes you better <laughs> that's right yeah uh well coach you got normal west tonight coming into town it's an early tip off of the fresh soft game will tip off at five and then varsity approximately six thirty we hope and uh we hope we have a you know if you have a chance get out and see the kids uh, if you saw them play southeast it's not the same team uh no you know we we sat around the whole month of december and it, we were really stale that game and um, we've tried to pick up the pace a little bit and i think that has helped us out some and uh, our guys are very unselfish uh, and uh, uh, they had an excellent tournament so hopefully uh, they can continue to to roll on well, there's no doubt in my mind they will. It's a 5 o'clock tip-off tonight. Roy S. Anderson Gymnasium. You going, Joe? Absolutely. Yeah, you are. All right, so get on out. Support them railers. Uh, hopefully that weather holds off so we can get a game in tonight and then, uh, you know, start the Central State 8 schedule next weekend. Yeah, well, right. we've already started with Southeast, but really get into it next weekend. So, Coach, thanks for coming in this morning. and. Uh, I'm sure you got a shoot around or something going on today before well we had to shuffle that around I this know, morning my and, bad uh, <laughs> everything so uh, <laughs> we won't go into that because we don't have time <laughs> yeah that's my it's my fault mm -hmm. i'm still on vacation my mm. brain kind of wanders so all right coach thanks for coming in uh we'll see you tonight at roy s anderson uh we'll take another commercial break we'll come back we got some nfl to talk about some uh basketball some bowl games going on some real good football games so stay tuned you're in the cheap seats 96.3 wlcnonline.com so i was wondering i did i'll show it to you good morning sports fans you're in the cheap seats on 96.3 fm wlcnonline.com streaming live on the web 24 7 live. streaming That's great Phrase. All over the world, Streaming you can listen. Live. Yeah, you can listen to this, and also uh, make sure to tune in to Channel Five, uh, Comcast Channel Five, for all of our rebroadcast. Rebroadcast. Wow, that's a, that's a tongue twister. Yeah, don't try to say that fast. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna say it again. That was, a, that, was, that was horrible. See what happens when you take a week off. You know, you can't talk. I'm sure you've been talking this past week. So I have uh, nonstop. I haven't been on vacation. You know, just what have you been doing? On vacation? Absolutely nothing. Imagine that. I did clean the house, so I did do something. I had to, though, or I'd have been in the doghouse. But uh, be sure to check out Comcast Channel 5, uh, Lincoln Mount Pulaski, for film coverage of LCHS football, basketball games, along with the Main Street Lincoln Christmas Parade. Uh, the Lincoln Park District breakfast with Santa, which was a huge success. They had over 80 kids come through and set on Santa. Oh, good. Uh, and Jim was there filming. And uh, so that, that's a huge success. The kids love it. And then you can also see the uh, Scott Kirby, Jake Johnston featuring Joe Ryan every great once in a while. Every once in a while. Now that football's over. You can also check out the Cheap Seats uh, live Saturday morning sports show on uh, – you know, replays on Channel 5 and as well online. So, you know, if it's something that you liked what we did, tune in. We if like not, what you do. Yeah. Then, then don't tell anybody. Sorry. We'll try to get better. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of sports. Uh, if you're a sports fan, this is a good time of the year. We got the NFL playoffs starting up. You got uh, all Lots the bowl, bowl games. games. 
You got basketball, Illinois with a big win over Missouri last weekend. Yeah, uh, that was a big win. I didn't huge win. win that game, actually. I didn't either. <laughs> you know, a lot of basketball Indiana, going on. Indiana, yeah. I think they beat Indiana. Yeah, they did. They just beat Indiana yeah. the other night by three. Three, yeah. So I came down to the wire. Uh, NBA basketball, if you follow that, I don't. Is it going on? Yeah, I don't follow it much. No, uh, I don't think about it. My kids love it, and they're, it's always on. Jake, and, he knows all about it. Yeah, he he don't watch NBA basketball. He doesn't. And you know what's right around the corner? They'll be it's meeting here in about a month. Baseball. Baseball. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it is getting that time of year. It is. It's flying by. You know, January 4th. Hope so, every, you know. Hope so everybody had a Eve. good New Year. Let's, huh? let's talk about New Year's Eve, man. Did you watch Johnny Manziel? I, you know, I haven't really watched much football. I don't know. I just, I don't know. That guy did it again. He's amazing. You know, he, he was, and you know, he's so, uh, uh, there's a bit of arrogance about him, cockiness, confidence, something, but he seems to get it done. He's, he is entertaining. I don't know what he's going to do if he goes on the NFL. Well, that's what me and Jake, we've always had this uh, argument. Will he succeed in the NFL? Is he an NFL quarterback? Well, you know, we had a Heisman winner not too long ago that didn't make it in the NFL. Right. I uh, mean, look at all the past. I mean, remember Joey Harrington? Sure. He didn't make it in the NFL. Uh, I mean, there's just been, you know, all kinds of quarterbacks. I, to uh, me, I don't see how he makes it in the NFL. But I watch him continue to win. At one point in time that game there night, he got all twisted around and, and just ran backwards with the football, like for three or four yards for a first down. But you're not going to do that he's in the NFL because the, no, the level of competition <laughs> right. is different. But yeah. he's still playing. Uh, who are they playing? I can't even remember now. But, you know, it's a it's a Division One college football team right. that is recruiting the best athletes in the nation. Yeah. Well, it was, I'm not he's saying fun I, to watch. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not saying I don't want him to succeed in the NFL. I just don't see it. I don't think he has the size. Or I don't think he has the endurance. I, Robert Griffin III is a good example. He's one of those scramblers. He's, you know, out of the pocket running. What, what did he do this year after he got hurt? Well, you know, I think they treated RG3 wrong. And it, but, you know, it, in the NFL, it's all about winning right now. You know, I mean, it, oh, yeah. it is right now, today, or you can lose your job. That's not to say that some other team won't pick you up and pay you more money, uh, you know, as a coach. But, you know, they used RG3 too much and tried to have him do too much and and it didn't work out for him I, you know I, they should have taken their time and said hey you know we hope to be a contender in three years instead they want to be a contender right now overnight and they kind of burned him up but uh you know i mean that's the life of a professional athlete you get into professional sports and what right. we were talking the other day they paid uh espn paid the nfl 115 million dollars a game to have sunday night football a game 115 million dollars a game you listeners looked it up on the internet. I'm sure that's what that number was. One hundred and fifteen million dollars a game. Times that by seven. That's a bunch. That's a bunch of money going somewhere, and, <laughs> and you yeah. have to win at all costs. And you know, yeah. they, these guys are disposable. Well, that's why towards the end of the year they have that uh, where you can shuffle the schedule because sure. you know Sunday night football they're not going to put like they had the Cowboys in Philadelphia last Sunday because there's a lot on the line. You know, it's division championship. You know, if that would have been Tampa Bay versus Atlanta, you know, you're not going to get the viewing. So that's why they do that towards the end of the season where they can shuffle the schedule that's to make thing. that money. That is a good sure. thing. It's but a uh, – well, let's, uh, while we're here, we'll just babble about it a minute. We got the Chiefs and the Colts today. Yeah, we do. The Chiefs at the Colts. So what do you think? Uh, let's get your predictions. I'm kind of like the Colts at the Colts inside. Uh, you know, they Andrew Luck, they can put up some points. I think Kansas City – I think their run's going to come to an end. Do you really? You know what's really wrong you with know, all of that? And if you go opposite what I say, you'll probably win some money. Well, I'm going to go. You know, the Colts, I'm going to take the Chiefs just because I want to root for them. Uh, you know what? It's the one thing wrong with football. The Chiefs actually have a better record than the Colts, but the Colts are the division winner, so they have to travel. Well, it's just Kansas City has a better defense than Indy. Indy has a better offense than Kansas City. Who do you think wins this game if they go out to Kansas City and play? I'm going to say probably Kansas City yeah. out in the <laughs> yeah, elements. You know, you get, that's why, you know, if that game but is over there. Yeah, inside I think Indy has a little bit of an advantage uh, just because Andrew Luck and I don't know. I like their coach. Well, that's uh, today at uh, 3.30. Three, yeah, 3.25. So at 7 o'clock tonight, it's the Saints and the Eagles. What do you uh, get that game? I like the Saints. You like the Saints? I like the Saints. See, I don't know. I don't think so. No? No. Again, Eagles are at home. It's outside. 
the Eagles are doing so many things right. They are, but uh, you got Drew Brees on the other side of the ball, which he's just he's he's clutch. And you got Nick Foles for Philly, but they do have some weapons: and McCoy, Deshaun Jackson, uh, Selleck, tight end. They're scoring some points. The they Eagles are. are so are, but they're so up and down. Yeah. yeah, they they score points against the Bears, who have an awful defense. But let's see what they do. I mean, the Saints don't have a great defense, but it's pretty solid. Well, we're opposite there then, too. I think well, the I don't think we agree on that. anything. Well, we do agree on this. We're probably the two best radio announcers in Lincoln. We all, yeah. This <laughs> are in the top ten. Between nine and ten, yeah, yeah. absolutely. On this show right now. Uh, yeah, right now we are. We can have the fans right now call in for the poll <laughs> to see who's the best. <laughs> Okay, so we'll go to Sunday real quick. Okay, let's go uh, to Sunday. The Chargers are playing at the Bengals. I like the Bengals. I do too. Since, oh, we agree on something. The Bengals I, are at home. I do. I like Cincinnati. Uh, they got a lot of weapons, too. Chargers have struggled. Um, and they squeaked in. Uh, if Kansas City would have won that game, San Diego wouldn't even been in the playoffs. It's so, true. So. Should have never got in. Yeah. There's a vote for you. Oh, my phone uh, just went off it. I don't know. That's one vote for you, yeah. and it was your wife. We just, we just Come on, Michelle, call. <laughs> uh, she, she might, and she'll be like, I, I got to go with Kirby. <laughs> uh, the late game tomorrow, the 49ers at the Packers. I like Green or I don't like Green Bay. I like San Francisco. Well, you don't like Green Bay because you're a Bear fan. I do. Let's uh, yeah, just look at right. the game. San Francisco. You think so? Yeah. I think San Francisco's good, but I just can't get over Kaepernick. I just I can't like him or root for him. I like San Francisco's defense. Yeah. Uh, I don't like Green Bay's defense. I think Kaepernick can have a huge day against Green Bay. It's going to be – there might be four or five defense. foot of snow there, you know, once all said. They said they were expecting the, the game time temperature to be below zero with yeah. the wind chill. San Fran boys uh, yeah, don't like that They stuff. don't, no. <laughs> but – I don't think Green Bay boys would. Eat. They would prefer. But they played playing. it. They do, but I think they'd rather prefer playing in San Francisco. So then let's talk about you know the big factor here. Of course, is Rogers. Uh, you know, they say a layoff would hurt you. What's he been out five, six weeks? Yeah. Well, you he's, know, it's been longer now. I think. It, and now they've str they've stumbled into the playoffs. But I'll tell you. And Rogers didn't look that good last week. No, but is he fresh? You know, has that laid off helped him? Is it is his legs how's, back up well, under him? How's he, how's that collarbone going to feel when it's, you know, froze? Well, he needs to lay down. You know, if he if you got pressure, lay down. He can't be as effective as he usually no. is. I don't know. I don't. I think the Packers have a chance to win tomorrow. Well, anybody has a chance to win. It's the NFL. It's been so up and down this year. It's not even funny, and. Yeah, the Green Bay can win, but so can San Francisco. How do you like that? Well, you know what? That's a good point. <laughs> and that's why we're on this that's show. That's right, because, you know. So our advice to you guys is that either one of those teams could win. And you, either one could win. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to guarantee this. There will be four winners this week there in will the be. NFL. Yep. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. There will be four winners. And there will be foul weather. We're also weathermen. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be cold. Good. Yep, good. It's going to be cold here in Lincoln, too. It's, man. It. A little too cold for my blood. I'm getting old. Yeah. And as thin as I am, it kind of goes right through me. Like yourself, probably you're all right with it. No, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I think we have a caller. And I'm back. Oh, he's back. And there he he's is. back. That's Jake, the furniture guy, Johnston. Good morning. Good day, gentlemen. What's happening over How you there? Doing, Jake? Uh, you know what? I'm playing around here. We actually uh, were... We're finishing up our sale on uh, four mile mattresses and mattress closeouts. Uh, getting ready for uh, New Year models coming out next week, so uh, we still got a few big closeouts on those. And then uh, our area rugs, there's still 50% off what's left of those. And uh, coffee table and end table sets are on sale, so we're we're kind of pulling a whole bunch of stuff out of here right now. That's good. Hey, if you would have been here today, we would have got some more stuff. We've uh, been selling furniture for you. We got uh, Julie King, the director of the Independent Living. She's going to be looking you up to uh, furnish the new uh, Almost Home uh, program. That's my lady right there. Yeah. King and Julie. Julie's a superstar here. She is. So absolutely. She's a good guest to have. She she gets into it. We talked a little bit of uh, some Olympics she's a today. Detroit fan. So oh, is she really? Yeah. You know, is what it is. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, w w Jake, what's your uh, what's your take on some of these games going on today, tomorrow? What, uh, who do you like between Kansas City and Indy? Uh, you know what? I, I'm actually uh, I, I, I kind of like Indy actually in that game. Uh huh. Um, Luck, Luck's just 
tough, and I think uh, I think this is going to be kind of a coming out party for him. As good as he's been, I still think he's a little bit underrated on a national scale. Be coming from Indianapolis, uh, much like Peyton Manning was. I mean, as, as much hype as what Peyton Manning has always had, uh, I believe he was underrated in his first few years. I think people kind of took for granted where he was at and who his receivers were. Well, I'm um, with you on I that. Think Andrew, I think Andrew Luck is the same boat there. Yeah, and, and then uh, I, I believe who's the other game today? Uh, uh, Green Bay, right? Saints and Eagles. Green Bay today. 49ers? Saints, Saints, Saints and Eagles. Oh, Eagles! Uh, I like the Eagles. I think they're rolling right now. Oh, I do too. They're I hot. like New Orleans. Hot, hot, hot. So all right. Yeah, I. Uh, I mean, New Orleans. Actually, New Orleans lost two weeks ago pretty bad. Uh, you know, I like New Orleans all right. I like Drew Brees. You can't go wrong with a pick for, with him on a team. Uh, however, you know, I think the Eagles are just smoking right now, man. And if their defense is on, and if they can get a lead, it, it's going downhill and going downhill quick. I agree. What about the Chargers at the at the Bengals? Uh, I like the Bengals on that one. Since they're finally going to break that, uh, I, I call it kind of a mini curse they got going on there. Uh, but I like Cincinnati. That's yeah. my old coach right. over there, you know, Kenny Wisenhunt, the offensive coordinator. He was the head coach, took the Cardinals to the Super Bowl. So I kind of root yep. for the Chargers, uh, but I don't think they can win tomorrow. No. All right, last one, 49ers-Packers. Yeah, we were kind of up in the air on this one, Jake. You, you know what? I had a, a long discussion uh, with a group of friends on this one the other day, and I know they're listening right now. When, you, when I, you say group, do you mean one? Yeah. Uh, what no, group of friends? Six different gentlemen oh. in this conversation. Okay. And, <laughs> and I was the only one on this side of the fence. I'm going, Are you in a chat room? I'm going 49ers. And I'm going, it's not even going to be close. I'm with you. I, I like the Niners as well. Uh, <clears throat> I like their defense. I don't believe the Packers have played, has played a good, solid defense like these guys in many weeks. Uh, I don't think, uh, I think their speed is going to be a lot uh, a lot tougher for Aaron Rodgers to catch up to. He's had a full mm-hmm. week of practice, but he was limited in practice as well. Uh, I, I think it's going to be tough. Even though that Lambo is going to be the coldest game ever is what they're saying. It's going to be the coldest game ever for both teams. Right. So the, let, let's face it, they're not built like they were in the 60s. No. So, and I can see uh, I can, going, I can see Frank Gore having a big game. That's exactly where I'm going. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking Frankie Frank Gore. Gore, and I think their, their run defense will not allow Lacey to get They down could win the Super Bowl. Get up the gut. Right, right. So. It says wind chills tomorrow during that game, minus 30. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> that makes well, my bones. Call now and get right. your free tickets in here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Quick, what's the, what's the over-under? On guys with their shirts off. <laughs> if, it, if it's over one, that guy, uh, there'll be so. I'm, I'm, telling, I'm telling you right now, I'm setting the mark, and it's going to be over five oh, on yeah. TV. I'd it, take the over. It'll be over five on TV, and I'm thinking there's, there's probably going to be more like, well, if, if they span the entire stadium, there's going to be about 40. But, uh, you know, that that's going to be ridiculous. There's negative, some, what do you say, 30? Negative 30. Negative 30. Yeah. There's some guys right now buying beer and body paint to go to that game. Uh, yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> because they have to start thinking right now to get their get, get them liquefied. Yeah. <laughs> so what about, did you guys talk about the, the Cutler uh, signing yet? You know, we we haven't. We've, you know, we've been talking. We've been We're all busy over, up here, We've been Jake. all over the place, Jake. Uh, we've been talking high school basketball, Olympics. But, yeah, let, let's, uh, let's touch on that uh, topic right now. Uh, the Bears re-signing Cutler for seven years. <laughs> it, it, what's it like? Seventeen, almost eighteen million a year. I don't know if they ever did yeah. give the exact for the figure. First, for the first three years, it's about eighteen million a year, and then after that, it's basically if, if he's good, they'll keep him. If he's not good, they'll restructure it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it he he won't be there for the full term. There's no way, not in the NFL. They'll restructure it so it's right. be a, a much lesser contract after three years. But it's basically set up so. They could be hit by a salary cap if something happened in the first three years. After that, they have no uh, liability. I mean, he, they they can dump him if they want. Right. Is he related uh, to someone in the so, main office over there? No, I, you know I don't have a problem with that signing because I think he's. You saw improvement from Cutler, and how many different uh, offensive systems has he been in? And yeah. you know he when well, he not only, not only that, but I mean, who's better? Right, nobody. Well, yeah, that's true. And you know, I would like that signing even more if they get McCown back as a backup. I think that's key right there, bringing him back as a backup because if Cutler goes down, you know, they have somebody that they can plug in. 
or somebody similar, like a, a castle or somebody like that, you know, uh, that, that you can plug in as more of a man- game manager uh, that has a, a decent arm, you know. I right. think they'll be okay. And then the other big story this week, if you're a Bears fan, is Lovey Smith not signing with the Detroit Lions and going down to Tampa and staying out of your own division. Well, that's where he was originally from, Tampa. He was down there yep. with uh, uh, Dungy. So he's kind of – it's kind of a – and I thought he might get that Houston job as well, but uh, he wanted to go down to Tampa. I'm a big fan of Lovey. I like yeah. him. Well, let's let's stick with just real quick the Bears. The Bears, the, the quarterback issue is the least of their issues right now. They have to get younger yeah. on defense. We need some uh, secondary. We need some defensive uh, linemen. Uh, yeah. And they're, I think – They're picking fourth in the draft or 14th in the draft, uh, and I can see them trading down uh, – five to ten spots and maybe picking up a couple extra picks. They They're keep- needing, uh, you know, minimum one defensive lineman, one uh, linebacker, and two uh, secondary. Two guys in the secondary. Yeah, we, we I'd have- say that's the minimum. Yeah. The receiver's locked in. Receivers are locked oh, that's in. That's good. They have got some uh, great and receivers. I, the receiver, and I think Marquise Wilson, when he gets some more work over the summer with uh, Marshall, Jeffrey, and Cutler said he's going yep. down to work with them. He's just going to be a beast as well. But uh, they have some needs, uh, and they also talked about moving uh, Shea McClellan to a, a outside linebacker, which I think that's a good idea because he can't stop the run on the de- at, at defensive end. He's just not big enough. No. No, and, and that's what he actually is. He's actually a uh, 3-4 outside linebacker. Uh, and, unfortunately, the Bears don't play 3-4. Right. So uh, they're going to have to do something with him. He is a very talented guy, but he cannot take on a heavy block. No, he uh, can't. Against a run. No. So, you know, yeah, that, that's an issue. And I think if they could figure out a way to get, get him trained in the linebacker mentality, I think he could be good because he is a very good tackler. He is. Good point. Well, Jake, it's 10 o'clock, buddy. Uh, our time has come to an end. Uh, thanks for calling in. And uh, for all you listeners that, you know, need a nice, warm, comfy couch or recliner or something for this cold weather, go out and see Jake. You They'll think he'd give us nice, hey. comfy chairs to this for us? Well, he would, but he's working right now. He don't have time for us. I, I, I wouldn't call what I do work. That's no, right. he's laid back in a recliner job. right now. Well, hey, the name <laughs> sells exactly itself, right. you know. That's exactly right. Sells itself. All right, Jake. Hey, we'll Jake. Gentlemen. Hey, we'll, we'll be at your place next week, I believe. Good day, All right, we'll see, see you, Jake. That's Jake, the furniture guy, Johnston, calling in, giving us his view. Uh, before we go, we do have to thank Hampton Inn. They are our coffee and pastry sponsor. You know, every, Delicious. every Saturday morning they're bringing a fresh pot of coffee and a a box full of goodies for us. So. so that the listeners and the viewers can watch us gain weight live right in front of their eyes. That's right. Well, starting Monday, oh, yeah. I'm hitting it. Oh, yeah. We're gonna, I'm hitting you it. You wait till you, you see give us spin out. Yeah, you give us three months, and then when you tune in, me and Joe we'll will be, be here. straight up shirtless. like this. We'll yep. be shirtless. It'll be a no-shirt yeah, Saturday. Yep. That's we'll, coming we'll up. We'll get in a little the, spray tan going on. April. So uh, give us about April. May. May. Give us till June. June. <laughs> June. <laughs> so hey, thanks for tuning in to Cheap yeah, Seats. It will be a rated show. You won't, right, right. You won't be yeah. under under the age of eighteen watching it. That's right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we got to go on that note. Thanks for tuning in. I like to thank the Christian Village for hosting us again on this uh, brisk Saturday morning. I do believe next week we will be at uh, Jake's. And then stay tuned. We do have fancy football information, which we haven't. We didn't have time to talk about today. We have winners. Uh, so we'll be announcing the winners next week and giving you more details on that. So stay tuned uh, for our next broadcast. Uh, I'm sure next you'll be Saturday. with us next Saturday, I think, from Jake. So thanks for listening. You're in the Cheap Seats 96.3 WLCNOnline.com.